This is Radio Ukraine International with the weekly program Doing Business, hosted by Rodion Drzeznevsky and produced by Konstantin Lavrentyuk. Doing Business covers current economic developments in and concerning Ukraine and gives topical information as well as immediate and longer-term economic forecasts. It is what we think might give you food for thought and help you see Ukraine through the economic angle. For some years, the Ukrainian capital markets have been held back by a lack of activity and liquidity due to major gaps and inconsistencies in the underlying legislation. A new law comes into force this summer and aims to restart the Ukrainian capital markets, bringing legislation into the line with EU capital market laws. The creation of the National Investment Fund could also have a transformational impact preparing key state-owned enterprises for initial public offerings. Stephen Butler, managing partner of the Strategy Council, brought together a panel of respected capital market practitioners and key officials to debate whether the measures being taken are enough to stimulate the emergence of Kyiv as a regional financial center. The following speakers participated in the Ukrainian Capital Markets webinar are Olga Magilevska, Office Head of the National Investment Council, Ayuna Nichaeva, Head of Europe Primary Markets at the London Stock Exchange, Volodymyr Kuzio, Head of NBFI and Capital Markets USAID, Irina Kravchenko, Deputy Head of the EBRD Office in Ukraine, Maxim Libanov and Yuri Boyko, Commissioners of the National Securities and Stock Market Commission of Ukraine, and Orest Matvichuk, Senior Associate with CMS Cameron McKenna, Nabara Olsvang. The moderator of the webinar was Igor Alekhov, partner and head of banking and finance practice at CMS Cameron McKenna, Nabara Olsvang. My first question is to Olga Magilevska. Could you tell us, please, what the Ukrainian National Investment Fund actually is? What is the idea? Why does the Ukrainian government think about investment funds? What role should your investment fund play in the development of capital markets? For me, let's start uh, a little with the history of fund of funds. Because here, like uh, saying the National Investment Fund for, for Ukraine, there is basically no real concept uh, under uh, that naming. Because, for example, with uh, Metro Tarabakin and uh, with the EBRD before, like uh, half a year ago, we understood under the National Investment Fund, or we called it NIF, uh, uh, something else. Not that one which was uh, mentioned in the government uh, uh, decree. So I believe it's more about the first state fund of fund. And uh, let's uh, talk firstly about the Say the history and uh, in other countries and how possible to implement them in Ukraine. So one of the first state fund of funds uh, was the European Investment Fund, which was established in the European Investment Bank in 1997 to invest in uh, SMEs, in SME equity through venture funds. And the two main goals uh, pursued by founders were to increase employment in the European Union and to develop high-tech SMEs. If we look at the efficiency of the first investments, employment in IAF-backed firms increased by almost 30% compared to 0.7% for the uh, EU. And the internal rate of return was slightly lower than the average return of the best venture funds in the European Union. That was about 30%. So, fund of funds are commonly used by private investors and sovereign entities. And there are some examples of the government-backed funds. So, the Central Europe fund of funds for Austria, Czech Republic, Slovakia, Hungary, and Slovenia, that was established jointly by domestic governments and the European Investment Fund, seeking to indirectly support SMEs and improve the investment ecosystem in the region. Funds assets amounted to 100 million euro and focuses in tech, 
ICT, life science, and energy. One of funds like Mubada Capital Ventures from United Arab Emirates invests into growth technology funds and early stage funds that exercise active management of their portfolios with access to boards and portfolio companies. And in China, for example, a fund of funds mostly looking on high tech and advanced manufacturing companies. All funding was uh, provided by the government and uh, reached uh, almost uh, $600 billion. And more than 1,600 investment funds raised financing from these government funds. The European Investment Fund manages many funds in the European Union, and their investment professionals evaluate potential companies, mitigate risks, monitor investments, and more. At the European level, the EIF is regulated by the AMF. D directive, and this directive uh, defines tax policy, legal status, investors' protection, requirements for investment managers, etc. And in addition to European legislation, there should be modern legislation of collective investment schemes at the national level. And in Ukraine, investment legislation has changed very little in recent years. The issue of implementing the European AIF and D directive and UCITS4 directive has been raised already. Now, Ukrainian laws do not allow the state, municipalities, and legal entities with state shares more than 20% to be owners of mutual funds, including for purposes of fund of funds. And a separate regulation for such funds, let's say, requirements uh, to the assets uh, management, non interference uh, of state, etc., would be in, a, in essence in order to minimize political pressure and allegations in misconduct. So, so far, the Cabinet of Ministers has created a National Investment Fund as a state enterprise. In the future, for greater transparency and efficiency, it is reasonable to transform enterprise in a joint venture with several founders that receive a portion of financing from IFIs, including based on loan facility or other terms. And the government must provide funds for investing in the most promising industries in Ukraine. Let's define them. As well, it should be funds from the budget, part of the profit of state owned enterprises, for example, income from the natural resources rent, part of the balance of payment surplus or central bank reserves. These are also, these are several models, let's say, or combining. And the financial presence of the Ukrainian government should be a comfort message to external investors who are usually quite concerned about risks associated with Ukraine and Ukrainian business. And investing via fund of funds may also appear reasonably secure. It's firstly a multi-tier investment framework under fund of funds helps mitigate market volatility risks and risks arising in connection with inflation and counterparty defaults. And secondly, fund managers and those administering underlying assets through investment funds would usually undergo due diligence seeking to establish their high-level industry expertise and the ground. And this should help avoid any misconduct or part of the fund management terms. And thirdly, a broad asset base of underlying portfolio helps maintain investment diversification. In view of the tax benefits that investors enjoy under the Mushal Fund scheme, as well as the common practices exercised in relation to the legal structuring of Fund of Funds internationally, it appears practical to apply a similar arrangement to the Fund of Funds in Ukraine, and it's subject to certain changes of Ukrainian laws as well. And also, in the next draft law governing the state budget for 2022 should be incorporated relevant changes and also challenges that certain portion of public financing will be allocated to fund the activities of state fund of funds. Regardless those challenges, implementation of fund of funds in Ukraine in overall appear to be a natural response to shortage of capital and also should foster investments in a number of strategic sectors, which assumably should be targeted for the fund of fund sector. The next question is to Irina Kravchenko. What are the main objectives of the European Bank for Reconstruction and Development? As you're probably aware, EBRD have been involved in capital market development over an entire decade. And there were a number of different initiatives. 
technical assistance project. We work with the commission. We work with the National Bank of Ukraine. Now join the, the, so it was absolutely natural for us to join efforts with USAID, with American Chamber of Commerce, and uh, to join our efforts in order to try to move or to make another, how to say, push towards consolidation and integration of local capital and organized commodity markets. Because we have been talking about that for years, as I said, over a decade. Unfortunately, certain achievements have been made, especially derivatives law, which I think is a big step in development of the capital markets, but still a lot to be done. And uh, it's, I would say, next UA, it's just more like a concept rather than a structure. It's an approach which we finally managed to agree with the involvement of private participants because American Chamber of Commerce represented by uh, pr- pr- represent private sector. And this we are trying to find the best solution. And we believe that not only talking, but there will be certain actions, especially memorandum actually manifested their goodwill from the government, political will, which is quite key and important. Otherwise, we won't be able to move it forward. And um, there are still a lot of questions, I'm sure, among our participants and participants of the market to ask, because we don't have at the moment a clear answer how it's going to be structured, how CCP will be organized. And there will be a lot of consultation. We are not going to exclude existing market participants, especially in private sector. There will going to be a lot of consultations, workshops, discussions after the feasibility study first result presented. Because the whole purpose is to find the efficient, optimal, as we say, model for the structure, especially for post-trading infrastructure. And, you know, there, there is also a situation, a little bit of chicken and eggs. What should come first? Because we know that there are not so many actually products and volumes, especially at financial markets, are not so attractive and quite low. And how you can develop, because there were such already questions, how can you go ahead with developing infrastructure if there is nothing to trade? That's why, you know, we have also commodity markets, they are coming along, because this is where actually the interest and where, where the volumes are coming or exist. So... Our participation to answer your question is quite, I would say, obvious. There is no doubt of that. We are going to pull together all our expertise and experience, uh, financial and the technical expertise, which we have available. And jointly, we believe that it, we, we do understand, we are quite realistic. It's not going to be a very easy path or road. There will be a lot of interaction discussions. So, But uh, uh, we think it's absolutely key and crucial for economic development in Ukraine. And it's time already to start making real actions. And we are relying on the political support, largely, because without that, we won't be able to implement whatever ambitious and great plans we have. How do you see the development of stock and corporate bond markets? What are the plans to attract Ukrainians to invest in securities? That is the question to Maxim Libanov. I would say that to restart a corporate bond market, we made a lot of legislative work and new law on capital markets, which will take on force from 1st of July, consist of new provision dedicated to protection of bondholders. For example, we introduced a new concept of bondholder meeting when a bondholder can decide on some crucial issues which can affect on how issue will work and how issue will pay back all the obligations he has on the bond issues. For example, this bondholder meeting can decide how to act in case of a technical default or a real default of an issue. The second The second part of legislative changes is the concept of trustee, which we also introduced in this new capital markets law. This concept should make easier for bondholders to protect their rights in courts, in some judicial authorities or administrative authorities when some actions should be taken in favor of bondholders. Currently, Each bondholder individually should take those sections and it's pretty much difficult to organize bondholders and to make those actions the same way. 
So the concept of trustee will make easier bondholders to protect themselves and protect their rights in default cases or whatever. Currently, we developed secondary legislation on those issues and hopefully Ministry of Justice will register it in the nearest future. This is uh, from a legal point of view, uh, what uh, is changing. And uh, from a uh, market perspective, I would say that uh, we have uh, quite a uh, big interest uh, from financial institutions. Uh, they need to somehow support their liquidity and uh, they need uh, to refinance the activities. So issue of bonds, uh, corporate bonds, uh, is uh, a possible way for them how they can attract a new finance for their day-to-day activity. For example, just months ago, I think, or maybe a little bit more, two of, uh, I would say, biggest microfinancing institutions made a bond issues in Grivnas uh, to attract uh, this financing for their financial activity on the market. So I would say that we look into future with uh, quite an optimistic point of view. Ayuna Nichaeva, head of Europe Primary Markets, London Stock Exchange, previously advised the Kazakh government on plans to establish Astana as the regional center. So Ayuna, can you share with us the experience Ukraine should borrow to become part of the civilized world in terms of the capital market? What needs to be done? So yes, I was closely involved in the conversations actually from the very beginning with AIFC, the Astana International Financial Center. And they actually had a similar uh, construct where they had a number of good state-owned companies, but also a number of good private companies in Kazakhstan, which some of them were actually supported by the local exchange, the Kazakh, Kazakhstan Stock Exchange, KASE. But the government was very actually keen to create this international financial center, which they actually have done. So they've created the second exchange, AIX, Astana International Exchange. And I think the, what, the important point was around getting the international advice and best practice early on. And I think uh, with the, through the likes of EBRD, I remember there was an MOU, a tripartite MOU signed between the CTUK, EBRD and Astana International Financial Center. I think we've shared as LSEG our training and capability and our expertise. And also as the City of London, we came together and uh, you know, the, there was lots of expertise also in the area of legal. I think now we, we have also touched on the experience of Fondul Proprietati in Romania, where ELSEG is actually also an official partner with the Bucharest Stock Exchange, where we provide our expertise, but also technology to support the development of capital markets there. And we also work very, very closely with Frankel Templeton, who is the manager for uh, Fondul Proprietati, where the state basically allows uh, for small minority stakes in state-backed companies to be bundled into a fund and then offered to public and investors both abroad and domestically. And I think that's been a really great success. This fund is actually traded on the London Stock Exchange. As you know, we've had a number of conversations with the president of Ukraine, with the finance minister and uh, the national bank governor of Ukraine, uh, Mr. Shevchenko. And I'm really actually encouraged and excited to tell you that there is lots of mutual flow of information happening. There is lots of excitement actually in the UK about Ukraine and the Ukrainian opportunity. Sitting here in London, I can say that lots of stakeholders are interested in see what's going to be the next step for Ukraine. So a lot of the hard work has been done by Yuri, by Maxim here, and all of the speakers actually on this on this call. I think the next step, what will be really important is to get that right. So what's going to be the first Ukrainian champion that will come into the public market, both international and domestic, and do this sort of flagship deal? The like of uh, the sort of the fund that we're talking about, that would be fantastic. In Kazakhstan, certainly, the first flagship deal that happened was Kazatomprom, which is a uranium producer, the world's largest uranium producer. And this was the IPO that was dual listed both in London and in Astana. And for IIX, the Kazakh exchange, it was actually the first ever big IPO. A lot of the work was done in the background, but um, uh, looking where that's trading now, it's, it's pretty substantial. And Samruk is another sovereign wealth fund of Kazakhstan, did actually two follow-on issues after that, so selling down their stake further in Kazakhstan. Another point I wanted to mention is last year, the, a private company from Kazakhstan followed suit, Kaspi, KZ. They came to the market at a valuation of 6.5 billion in November last year, you know, during the pandemic. And I'm delighted to say that today the valuation of this company is 17 billion. It's more than tripled, actually, 
or around sort of nearly tripled on the London Stock Exchange since, since it's listed. And this is the kind of following that international stories get from the international investors through the public markets. I would like to make maybe my final point for this discussion today is that I think what's going to be next for Ukraine is pretty crucial. We've already had this year two debt deals. You know that the sovereign of Ukraine has listed an international sovereign bond. You know that you've had that Ukraftador, the state road agency, just actually last week completed its $700 million bond. And not only that, uh, it was at a historically low rate, 6.25%, and the demand was triple the offering. So the deal was three times oversubscribed and the demand came in at $2.4 billion. So not everyone who wanted to get in managed to invest. These are the hard facts. So I think it's really fantastic that we're having this conversation today. And I think we at London Stock Exchange Group are really basically stand ready to help you out on this journey. You're listening to Radio Ukraine's weekly program, Doing Business. There are two opposite problems in Ukraine. On the one hand, there are people who have money but don't know where to invest it. On the other hand, there is the Ukrainian economy, which is in dire need of investment. Moreover, these two problems continue to exist in parallel, not allowing either citizens to live better or the economy to grow. Solving these problems simultaneously is the task of the capital market. That is, the Capital Market acts as an intermediary that helps citizens turn their savings into capital and invest this capital in the economy. The economy using this capital will be able to grow and after a certain time return the money invested with interest to citizens and consequently they would become richer. The new law will give Ukrainians additional opportunities to preserve and increase their savings. This is just the right time as bank deposits are becoming less and less profitable because of the national bank's policy of reducing the discount rate. It is done in order to make lending available in Ukraine. In addition, this accordingly affects the rates on deposits and throughout the world, the profitability of bank deposits is minimal. Therefore, someone who wants to earn more will have to look for an alternative and the securities market can become such an opportunity for them. Nevertheless, one of the main obstacles to the full-fledged operation of the Ukrainian capital market is the lack of people's trust in non-bank financial institutions. Many people remember how the general corporatization ended in the 1990s. After becoming owners of shares, most Ukrainians never received any profit. Banking crises have also discouraged them from giving their savings into the wrong hands. At the same time, trust is one of the main conditions for the functioning of capital markets. And trust can only appear if there is reliable protection of buyers of securities, a reliable control system, etc. The new law is designed precisely to provide such mechanisms of protection and control. The new law opens up new business opportunities. It is also expected that the development of trade infrastructure in line with EU directives will reduce the risk of contract defaults. Businesses and investors have yet to see and assess the practical impact of the new capital markets law, as its effectiveness depends on the proper enactment and implementation of bylaws by the National Securities and Stock Market Commission. It was the end of the first part of the program about the Ukrainian Capital Markets webinar. That was Ready Ukraine's weekly program Doing Business, hosted by Rodion Zhiznevsky and produced by Konstantin Lavrentyuk. Tune in every Wednesday for more.